Hey, welcome to Debunking Mainstream Econ, number four, I think. I wanted to, I kind of wanted to emphasize a little bit on this, on MMT's focus spending aspect of, of the lens. And I bring this up because so many Republicans specifically uh, talk about how the government was spending too much and that's causing inflation and other BS like that. Biggest problem is from what I, from what I looked up, there was more Republicans who took PPP loans, despite I believe the fact that they actually had voted against that in the first place. I believe that anyway. Um, but at the beginning of the whole thing, Randall Ray, who I think he was one of the first economist professors to bring up job guarantee back in the nineties. Anyway. He was saying in a excuse me. He was saying in a interview, roughly like two months after the stimulus packages came out, which he which he got, which he said that he didn't need, but they were not focused. He said that the point of spending uh, in regards to stimulating an economy is giving money to those who don't have it, who can who can spend. And given that to, to, to people who have, you know, already have money and who have savings bonds and all that stuff, you know, millionaires and other, and other people like that, they're, they're savers. You know, they, they, they make, they, they make a lot of money speculating as far as jobs go, or they work at fixed income type firm, you know, hedge funds and, and the, and the like, they don't, they, they didn't need the stimulus package. They probably just took that and either just kind of added the savings they already had. However, the people like myself who needed it and got it, we stimulated the economy. So the direct opposite is true in regards to what the Republicans pretty much always say. Anyway, so because of the non-regulatory portion of the law, this is according to Forbes, this is obviously, as you can see from September of last year or so, uh, two years ago, excuse me. Uh, this says public companies were criticized for gaining loans via the Paycheck Protection Program, which was ostensibly created to help small businesses weather, uh, weather the econ economic impacts of the pandemic. Some public companies raised the capital in the stock market and have established banking relationships for the line of credit some crit some critics say Congress should have excluded public companies of any size from applying for our funds. I, I kind of agree with that. Um, under the CARES Act, the PPP allowed companies with up to 500 employees to apply for forgiving forgivable loans of up to 10 million, while a few high-profile companies gave back their PPP loans under pressure from media scrutiny. A study shows that only a small percentage of public companies return the PPP loans. It also finds, however, that most of those loans of less than one million. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. Let's see the study by uh, law by law firm Brian Cave Leighton Peisner, I guess, reviewed public company filing from with a securities exchange or SEC for a disclosure about the Paycheck Protection Program loans. The the firm found 850 borrowers indicated, indicated receiving PBP loan approvals. 107 of the borrowers, approximately 12%, later disclosed that they either didn't accept the loan or returned the proceeds without using it. About a quarter of the public companies who returned the loans had borrowed less than $2 million, threshold that would trigger a review by the U.S. Small Business Administration CGS has an article about that, which I probably will look at after I get done with this. Anyway, of the 759 public companies that elected not to return their PPP funds, approximately 27 had PPP loans of more than $2 million, with 73% received $2 million or less. About 8% of the public company loan recipients had kept their loans received, received under 100000 while over 55% received less than $1 million. About 200 public companies with PPP loans, over $2 million, elected to retain their PPP loans. 
at about 60% of their companies, the loans range between two and five million. At the amount of 36%, the amount was between a 4% loan funds were in excess of 10 million. The maximum loan, the PPP, or the maximum PPP, as the, as the firm explains, some companies could borrow more than 10 million aggregate because they had multiple subsidiaries, as, as, or yes, as, as, subsidiaries, subsidies, you know, whatever the fuck, you know, uh, other companies. In other cases, companies fell under special rules for the hospitality industry with multiple physical locations, chains, fewer than 500 employees in each hotel. When asked, Brian Clive attorney Robert Klingler, the author of the firm study, whether he was surprised by how many public companies went through the effort to take out PPP loans for less than $1 million, he replied that he was not. While one, while one may not usually think of public companies as small business, and most small businesses are not public companies, you still have a lot of small but public companies, he explained. About 70% of all PPP borrowers borrow less than 100,000, 90% borrowed less than 1 million. Company companies who kept loans meet SBA standards. The loan application required all companies to make certain certifications that mirrored the word in the law. Current economic uncertainty makes this loan request necessary to support the ongoing operations of the applicant. This underlying condition to satisfy to certify, excuse me, the, the need for a loan proved to be a source of a controversy of potential abuse. All right. In its facts, number 31 of PPP, the SBA explained it is unlikely that a public company well, substantial mar with substantial market value and access to capital markets will be able to make the required certification in good faith. No shoot. For more, yeah, okay. Um, let's see. Let's see, who did, who, who did it? Who did it? No. But yeah, for those who want to sit there and blame excessive government spending, I was saying people who did it, who got those PPP loans. And as you saw, quite a few of them did not return or did not unaccept or, you know, whatever the case may be. People like Dennis O'Leary, who at one point said that the general public should not be getting a handout. The, the Fed is printing too much money. Well, I'm pretty sure many of his subsidiaries got PPP loans, but they were meant to keep keep employees employed, keep keep the benefits going if if they have any, you know, stuff like that. I kind of wonder how many of those subsidiaries of his and others that not only retained employees but kept up insurance insurance premiums and stuff of that nature. If that, yeah, there's one that's the particular point that MMT loves to make, and that it's everything you spend is focused, it has a purpose, job guarantee, purpose, Medicare for all, purpose, Green New Deal, purpose. Actually, Green New Deal, kind of in my in my view anyway leads into the job and Medicare for all kind of gives, you know, the, the employees in the private sector that, that work for big corporations, a kind of a possible raise opportunity, because if we have Medicare for all, that means that big corporations that pay for insurance wouldn't have that power to hold over their employees head. So everything in that regard does take quite a bit of power out of the big corporations, which is probably the reason why nobody in Congress right now wants to vote on a Green New Deal, job guarantee, and minimum wage, or anything of that nature, because it keeps money in their pockets. So it kind of gives you something to think about for November coming up. It gives me something to think about for November, that's for sure. Um, I might be able to not vote for Joyce Beatty upcoming because 
Apparently, she is still currently on the Medicare for All caucus, the progressive wing, but she hasn't done shit as far as bringing it up. So whatever. Anyways, the point being is, MMT kind of helps you look at the entirety of macroeconomics, kind of makes you compare years before. It helps you learn the lessons that were the, the painful lessons of yesteryear and allows you to look at the upcoming and it kind of just shows you and kind of show kind of shows you the patterns that are involved in you know, the economic crisis that we had before. What caused it? What made it better? And how to expand on what made it better and try to keep those keep that that made it worse away. So yeah. Try learning MMT. Try learning monetary theory through real progressives. Looking up Stephanie Chelton. I know quite a few people online reference her book. Some actually try to twist it to a certain degree. And a lot of times I've had to take pictures of the book. It sucks. I do own it. And show them, no, she said this. She, she referenced it. Just like, just, like, just like the macroeconomic book I've been reading references that and references, well, references fractional banking return and which I think is spending taxing. I know what it is, but anyway, it references all that. Anyways, so yeah, so basically anytime that a Republican talks, it's usually the opposite. And when a Democrat talks, they usually down they they, they usually don't really hype the porn shit. They don't have they don't have anything. They they're in a role of trying to keep the two party system in power. So if you really wanna if you really wanna have change and you know in public recourse or discourse, whichever word you want to call it. I would suggest you actually fight to get open primaries and fight to get ranked choice voting and fight to make sure that your party, whether left or right, to me doesn't fucking matter at all either way. More than two parties is preferable because this way you have multiple messages out there. You have multiple ways of doing different policies and you have multiple debates you can, you can go into and win, lose, or draw. There's more of a variety at least. So I'm a policy and and by definition socialist. I'm not a party socialist. I don't fall under anybody's category in regards to that. If someone wants to call like AOC a socialist, I'm like, there's not almost nothing about her right now anymore that's socialist. Nothing nothing resembles socialism in regards to the policies that, that she pushes for. Sadly, same thing for, for Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders used to fight for a lot of different things, but given the fact that he should know that if we got rid of the, of the debt ceiling, which is an artificial spending stoppage, if we got rid of that, the Republicans would, would take advantage anyway. If the, Democrats, if the Democrats really wanted to give policy a good name in regards to, you know, the vast majority of people who live in this country, they would get rid of the debt ceiling. Debt ceiling tends to be a running issue for, for Republicans. So if you got rid of that part and you actually, you know, like soon got rid of it and actually started to spend on focus spending on the stuff that is deflationary, then Republicans have nothing to come back with at all. And we wouldn't have, we, I wouldn't be having this conversation here. Anyway, that's beside the point. And kind of off topic. My point being is MMT helps me look at everything. Mike Norman is an MMT here who's worked on Wall Street for 40 plus years. He also helps, helps people like myself to realize that there are two sides of every coin. So you have to look at both sides. Like for instance, I'll try and make this last part very short. <clears throat> for instance, since the U.S. government owns majority of the U.S. treasuries and the Fed pays interest on those, uh, on those interest or pays interest on those, on those uh, treasuries, that is a fiscal expansion uh, expansion. And a lot of those U.S. treasuries are actually owned by intergovernmental agencies, Social Security, uh, DSHS, you know, and the like. So that and 
given the fact that that also does mean that prices go up on all goods and services, those all goods and services will go down uh, as long as supply chain gets back running up. Because the more inventory stores and, well, retail stores have, I believe that they'll have to push the prices down because they'll have to sell the inventory in order to be able to bring in more stock for the inventory. So that's my thought of it anyway. So there are two sides of every story. Just think about that. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. This was, I, it was a debunking of sorts because I was trying to debunk Republicans in there too much spending, even though they were the ones that spent too much in regards to like on their own shit and not anybody else's. So anyways, thanks for watching. Peace out for now. I'll be back on tomorrow with more of, um, with more of my patreon.com slash you down with MMT textbook MMT. And I, if I find this story, I want to debunk, I'll debunk it tomorrow as well. Peace out.